Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Zechariah chapter 4 and verses and verses 7. Zechariah 4 and verses 7. I welcome you to the house of God this morning. We welcome those of you who are watching us from wherever you are. If you're from different countries, put it into that common feel. That will be great. We'll know where you're from. If you would like to say it as well, if you would like to remain anonymous, that's fine. But say a comment. Say, that's a good word, Pastor. That's, thank you for that message. Thank you for that talk. Amen. Or worship God right where you are. Amen. We, like, we, we love you and we welcome all of you here at Liberty. What a great, great worship this morning. Amen. That's great worship. And uh, we thank God this week we were able to be away for a few days of rest and relaxation. How many of you know that Jesus went out and uh, to the mountains and to the other side? And there he rested and waited on God. He was the son of God. And yet he went. Well, this week was the first time we had gone uh, in true COVID right down. Amen. How many of you know that we kept the doors open here? Right through. Not, not, not you know, we couldn't have people in here. But we kept the doors open. We were one of the churches and i'm not knocking any other church who didn't do this but we did not stream from our living room <clears throat> we wanted to open up the doors of the house of god and so we came here in the tick of the COVID, and i want you to thank god for the team they were here from the start amen during you remember those those weeks when uh they were saying you can't don't leave your house and don't uh, ambulances were walking or there every 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 15 minutes 20 minutes you hear an ambulance if you lived in Queens or Brooklyn or whatever and uh, these musicians and Minister Imran and uh, a number of people uh, in the in the uh, control room uh, my three boys uh, uh, today is the first day that they took a break from there amen they're out coming back with my mom and dad and brothers and sisters, uh, brother and sisters and their family, we were out uh, uh, having some rest, but uh, come on, give them a, a round of applause for, for being faithful to the church, and a few times, Minister Imran would call me Sunday morning and say, Pastor Joe, you think I can make it in, because he's coming in from New Jersey, he says, I heard they're blocking off the place, you know, you can't move, I says, just get in the car and drive, I need to have you here. Amen. If they tell you anything, tell them the Lord needed me. Amen. Hallelujah. And the Lord made a way. No one ever stopped him. No police. God kept the eyes of the police away so he can come and keep church. Aren't you glad for that? And now here we are in the house of God. Come on and give God praise. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. Zechariah 4 and verses uh, 7 says who art thou O great mountain before Zerubbabel thou shalt become a plain and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof as the, here's the word with shoutings crying grace grace unto it moreover the word of the Lord verse 8 came unto me saying the hands of of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. Verses 9. His hands shall also finish it. And thou shall know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me unto you. Amen. Praise God. So, if is there anyone who is moving those words, uh, just follow me with the scriptures. Amen. Glory to God. Father, thank you this morning for your word. Thank you for everyone who's here. Thank you for those who are with us today. Those who have come and braved uh, every single uh, announcement and storm. 
and made it into the king in, into the house of God. Thank you today that you are still God. I give you praise and I give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say to your mountain, mountain be thou removed, and it shall be removed. What God wants is for us to know that he is the God in the mountain and the God in the valley. And that God wants you to have this positivity about you. That you are walking by faith and not by sight. And that every storm that you have, God can make a way for clearing that storm. Every mountain that you come in contact with, God can turn it around. The trouble with many of us is that we encounter obstacles and mountains along our way. And we stop what God has envisioned and placed into our life. So that we can get to our destiny and to our purpose. The enemy is an expert in putting roadblocks into your life. The enemy is an expert in stopping your dream. The enemy is an expert in being a dream killer. Did you know how many people have had dreams? And their dreams died with them? Do you know how many people are laying in the cemetery with dreams that died with them? Because they started good, but they never ended what was started. They started, how many people have started this, this, this walk with God that you know when you started this walk with God. How many of you know that there were some young people that used to be vibrant and testify. I love God and you would never have thought that when a boy came along he would have sidetracked them. You would have never thought that when they got a new job it would have sidetracked them. You would have never thought that when they got new friends it would have sidetracked them. Do you remember the people who you started with back from Trinidad, back from Guyana, back in America? How many of them are still walking the same pathway? You can count on your hands how many people are still in contact with God. You are here because you are not allowing the enemy to be a dream killer. You are here because you're not allowing the enemy to kill your testimony. You are here because you are not allowing something to discourage you. Did you know how many people stop giving up on God because churches discourage them? Do you know how many people stop giving up on God because some pastor was not kind to them? Do you know how many people have given up on God because the brethren were not, they uh, did something against them? Dream killers are always going to be in your path. It is whether you allow your dream to be killed or you kill the killer who wants to kill your dream. <laughs> now I don't want you to go killing anybody. But I declare that everyone who has brought a killing dream to kill you and your testimony, that God is going to sidetrack them out from your pathway and that you're going to have a free pathway to walk in your dream. You are a destiny achiever. And for you to achieve your destiny, you can't let nobody stop you. Do you know who stops you? The people who are closest to you sometimes stop you. Do you know who stop you? The people who you never expect to stop you are the people who stop you. You know who stop you? Are the people who only like you here. But when you elevate here, they don't like you anymore. 
The people who stop you are the people who are jealous and want to bring you down. But God is saying, drop everyone who is a dream killer and walk into your destiny. Walk into your destiny because God has a pathway for you. God has a pathway for you. The destiny of building the temple was going to be sidetracked by many people. The destiny was, this was a vision that the man of God got from the angel about rebuilding the temple of God. And he says in verses 7, there is a mountain in front of this destiny. And this mountain, if you make it a tr your problem, it will become your problem. But this mountain, if you allow me to move this mountain from you, I will make sure that temple is built. Do you know how many people in their life are about to build things, but a mountain is in front of them? Do you know how many people are about to achieve things, but a mountain of problems is in front of them? Nothing good comes without a struggle. Nothing good comes without fasting and praying. Nothing good comes without perseverance and sweat and blood and tears. And many people who believe that you're going to achieve anything great... By just cruising on in life, you got another thing going. For the enemy will sidetrack you and he will frustrate you. And he will try to destroy you. But you're here today. You're not going to let the enemy destroy you, sidetrack you. And you're not going to let the enemy destroy your dreams that you have. Because God is about to tell the mountain on your behalf... Mountain be thou removed. And the Bible says the mountain shall be removed. Is there anybody here this morning that you need a mountain to be removed? And you know that you can do it. You know the pastor can do it. You know the church can do it. You know your boss can do it. But you know greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The king of kings and the lord of lords can move the mountain. Joshua chapter 13. Joshua chapter 13 and verses 1. Joshua was old and stricken in years. And the Lord said unto him, Thou art old and stricken in years. And but there remaineth yet much land to be possessed. Yes, Joshua was now old and stricken in years. And God turns to him. And say Joshua. I know you are old. And stricken in age. But yet. There is very much land. To be possessed. Sometimes. God will remind you. Of your limitations. But he is not giving you your limitations. For you to only. Know that there is a limit. To your achievement. He's telling you, I know you're limited, but I, God, I'm speaking to you that when I say you are limited, I am unlimited. When I say you are frail, I am infinite. When I say to you, you may have stumbling blocks, I will remove every stumbling block. But I'm telling you, Joshua, even though you're old and you're frail, there's still much land for you to go conquer. In your old age, you do not have to retire, you must refire. In your old age, you do not have to give up and say, let everyone else do it. God still has a work for you. You have come too far for you to let your virtue and your substance and your faith and your prayers and who you are in the presence of God to go sidetrack. The enemy would like to sidetrack all that you have put into your life and say, let somebody else do it. But inside of you is greatness and substance and faith and virtue and prayers and demons are afraid of you. Stand up and stretch your shoulders and said, there is a land for me to possess. 
There is a business for me to open. There is a book for me to write. There is a shout inside of me that I need to shout. There is my education that I still need to get. There is still my grandchildren that I will speak into their life and tell them of the goodness of God. I am not retiring. I'm refiring. I am not giving up. I am pushing up. I am not backtracking. I am going forward. Forward always. Backward never. I speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward, forward with God. And here is what he says. He says, I don't know if anyone is putting up these verses, but these verses are important for you. He says, now, Lord, here it is. <clears throat> he says, and now in chapter 14, our verses 10. He says, and now behold, the Lord had kept me alive. This is now Joshua. Testify. You have to testify of the goodness of God. And now, behold, the Lord had kept me alive. Hallelujah. As he says, these 40 and 5 years, ever since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, today, I am four score and five, 85. Yet, somebody said, yet, I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. My strength was then, even so is my strength now. Oh, I, I feel God in this one. For war, both to go out and to come in. Pastor Mahes, Joshua at 85, is testifying of the power of God and that he ain't giving up. In Guyana, is it the song or is it Dave Martin in the car? We ain't giving up no mountain. We ain't giving up no sea. We ain't giving up no river that belong to me. Now... Whatever you have, you can't give it up like that. Whatever God has given you, don't lose it like that. You went through storms. You went through grief. You went through tears. You went through trials. Don't let the enemy push you down. Say like Joshua. Joshua says, I am strong this day as I was 45 years ago. I ain't giving up. I came to tell somebody, we are not giving up. Listen, this, I've been preaching for 40 years myself. As a young preacher boy, we've seen it all. We preach when we had no bands. We preach when we had no lights. We preach when we had no screens. We preach when we had no beautiful Ephesus, edifice like this. It is not the accoutrements that makes us who we are. I'm strong as I was 40 years ago, ready to take on coronavirus in the name of the Lord. Ready to take on the devil blows in the name of the Lord. I am strong. That's what Joshua says. And then he says in verses 12, now give me this mountain. Give me this mountain that the Lord spake about in that day. For thou heardest in that day how the Anakims were there, and the cities were great and fenced. If so be the Lord with me, then I may, I might, no, I shall. I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. This is what the word of the Lord is saying to you today. You are going to be a victor and not a victim. You are going to be the driver and not the drivee. You are going to be the aggressor and not the defender. 
You are going to go out with blazing guns, with faith alive, with virtues intact, with testimonies still floating upon you. Though your body might be 40 years older, still your faith is 40 years younger. Though your eyes may be 40 years older, yet your grace and the power of God is still powerful. You are not going out quiet. You are not going out on the down low. You are going up on the high. And so this vision that was given to now this next Joshua to the governor Zerubbabel saying, Zerubbabel, you are now being given the task to rebuild this temple after 70 years. 70 years is a long period for you to resurrect anything. Some people have had dormancy for five years, for 10 years, and it seems impossible to resurrect what God has ordained. But here is what he says. He says, Zerubbabel, you laid the foundation to start it. I am going to see that you are there to end it. He says, be not despised of the small beginnings that you started when nobody saw it. Nobody saw when you were about to start it. They, they, they laughed at you. They mocked you. They says, you're going to build another temple? Where is the money going to come from? You're going to build another temple? Well, are they going to worship in the temple? No. But when God says, I started something, God is going to tell you he's going to finish it. He just needs some vessel to be in the middle who are going to say, use me, Lord. Here am I, Lord. Use me because I want to see your vision achieved. Is there anybody who want to see that the thing that was started is going to be completed? Did you know that in your life that you have started many things and many things are still unfinished? Did you know that in your life you have, you have made a, a push when everyone else was saying it? Sometimes in the middle of our emotion, we do things. But it is good. Because emotion is like the starter to the engine to start things going. But then, here is where the rubber meets the road. That's where it was emotional, euphoric, exciting. But anything you're going to do and build, a lot of people and a lot of accolades start with you. But next week, next month, next year. When God wants you to still stand in the gap, you are not going to have nobody clapping for you. You are not going to have nobody pushing you and saying, keep going. As a matter of fact, some of the same people are going to discourage you. What are you going to do then? Are you going to give up? I came to tell you, you can't give up. In the middle of you achieving what God wants for you. Because the temple would never have been built if Zerubbabel had stopped it. If Zerubbabel had said, no more. They laughed at me. They're mocking at me. I'm not going to do it. But God says, hey, when God says something, it shall be done. It is not by might. It is not by power. But it's by my spirit, said the Lord. And then... Here's what he says. Remember I talked to you about the seven eyes last week. The seven eyes that God will give you of wisdom, knowledge, understanding. You're going to watch in front, but you're going to see behind. You're going to watch there, but you're going to see over there. You're going to have a spirit of discernment. The Bible says that God has those seven eyes. Verses 10. For who despised the day... Verse 10, of small beginnings. And this is Zechariah 4 and verses 10. For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet 
in the hands of Zerubbabel. With those seven, they are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro through the earth. God sees everything. He is omnipotent, all-powerful, omniscience, all-knowing, omnipresent, all-present. Let me go that over again. The seven eyes of God runs to and fro from all parts of the earth. He knows what is done in the secret. He knows what's done in the open. He says that God is omniscient. He is all-knowing. Omniscience. Omnici omni means all. Omniscience means knowledge. All knowledgeable. All-knowing. He is also omni omnipotent omni means all potent means powerful all powerful he is all knowledge all knowing all powerful and he is all present omnipresent all presence when you put those three together you get the eyes of God that runs to and fro and he is looking over you and he's making sure that everything is going to be all right. He's looking over your family and he knows that everything will be all right. And here is what he says. He says, I took Joshua up into a vision. And in that vision was a bowl. And with that bowl was a golden candlestick. And in that bowl was attached to the bowl seven lamps. And the seven lamps had seven pipes. And the seven pipes were attached to the bowl. You can't have a bowl and you can't have a lamp and there is nothing going on. And what he says is, there is the bowl, there is the lamps, but what makes it run? See, you can have all the things, but if you're missing the ingredient that makes it run, you are marching time and it's only before a matter of time that you get tired and weary. Did you know why so many people are tired and weary during Corona? It's because they're walking in their own strength. They're walking with their own bowl. They're walking with their own lamps. But the lamps has no oil and the bowl has nothing to carry with it. When you walk with emptiness, you're going to end up empty. When you walk without anything that comes from God, you're going to end up discouraged. Do you know why fear is hitting so many people? What they say is that since Corona, from February to now, there has been a huge increase of anxiety attacks, fear, panic, depression, and sadness. When you have an empty bowl, you're going to have the things that comes upon you because you do not have the connectivity, what connects and makes that bowl, that golden, that golden, uh, uh, that golden candlestick, what makes it what it is. The golden candlestick is Jesus Christ. The golden candlestick comes from above. But here is what God says in verses 12. He says, these two olive branch, I have attached it to the pipes that goes into the lamps. Your pipes, sometimes if it's attached to carnality, you're going to get blocked up pipes. If your pipes are attached to anger, you're going to get blocked up pipes. If your pipes are attached to anxiety, you're going to get blocked up pipes. The pipes that we were talking about is connected, the Bible says, in verses 12, to the golden oil that comes out, comes out from the anointed ones of God. It says, and on both sides is an olive on the left and the right. 
And he explains to the man of God, he says, the olives represents the two anointed beings that are with Jesus Christ who reigns over the entire earth. Verses 14. Then said he, these are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Who are these two? These are the anointed ones that empties the golden oil out of themselves into the, the, into the bowl that runs into the pipe that goes up into the lamps. Now I didn't say it. It's in the Bible. It's a vision. It may sound like Nancy's story, but it's a vision by Zechariah saying that seven represents completeness. Seven lamps represents seven brightness. Seven represents some greatness of God. Seven is God's number. In the Bible, it talks about the, symbol, the seven candlesticks, the seven seals, the seven trumpets, the seven vials, the seven different things. And what he says, for everything that's seven, bad seven times, I am going to give you seven times of golden oil that's flowing from the throne of God. If your life is walking dry, I want you to get connected to the seven lamps that's attached to the anointed ones. If you are going empty, I want you to get connected to the seven lamps. And when you get connected to what this vision says, he says you'll never go dry. In the middle of your storm, you're always going to have replenishment. In the middle of your trials, you're always going to have a, a, a place of reservoir. You know why there's not, there's not one lamp? Why there's seven? Because when one goes down, you still have others lighted. Woe to us when all our lamps are gone. God has given us more than one lamp. God has given you more than one option. You think you have only one option, but you have a few. You got seven options. You got seven places to dig from. You have seven rivers to go after. You have seven candles to go after. You have seven oils to go after. When one goes down, and believe me, life is so hard. There are going to be some times, some of your candles, some of your lamps are going to go dry. There are going to be times when in this life you are going to say, I can't make it. But he connects you to seven lamps with seven pipes that's connected to the anointed ones. And the Bible says in that chapter, and on the left and the right are the two anointed ones. Now if theologians explain this, and I am not going to tell you it is so. But it could be the two archangels. There are two archangels. Michael the archangel and Gabriel the archangel. The two anointed ones. Who is always with the Lord. That scripture says. And he. They, they says that they empty themselves of golden oil. To pour into your lamps. Poured it into the lamps. Zerubbabel finished the temple. The mountain was removed because it flowed from the, the, the heights of the divine King of Kings and Lord of Lords. If your source is from black magic, you're going to fail. If your source is from Bill Gates, you're going to fail. If your source is from politics and Trump, you're going to fail. If your source is with a political affiliation, you will fail. If your source is from the, 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 the pits of hell, you will fail. But when your source is from those seven pipes, seven lamps, where the source is the anointed ones, as Zechariah chapter 4 says, the anointed ones pours out of themselves golden oil, you will succeed. Is there anybody here this morning who God is pouring oil into your lamp? Who God is pouring, not, not kerosene oil, 
not mentholated spirit, not, not any kind of oil that's going to go down, not alcohol oil, but it's pouring golden oil into your, into your bosom. He's pouring golden oil. He's giving you the best. He's not giving you the second best. He's giving you the best. You are a golden boy. You're a golden girl. Somebody shout, I'm golden. I'm golden because Calvary runs through my veins. I'm golden because all the pipes that's connected to me, I have unblocked them. I want you to unblock every pipe that's connected to you. If, we, if connected to you is a pipe of discouragement, Start asking God for holy oil from the anointed ones to pour in upon you. If what is connected to you is, is a pipe of discouragement, start saying, God, I can't live this way anymore. I can't live discouraged anymore. If what is connected to you is carnality and anger, God, I get angry over everything. Now it seems like I lose my temper, a short temper. The kids get me angry. The boss gets me angry. The, the dog gets me angry. The cat gets me angry. I hear a little noise, I get angry. You got to say, God, you got to help me now. Poor, connect me to the right oil. You have been connected to the wrong oil. I want you to get connected to the right oil. Golden oil coming from the anointed one. Is there anybody here? Who wants to get connected to the right oil? Get connected to the right source. Get connected where it's flowing and it's flowing free.